Hi folks, Sandro here with World Cartoon News and Shenanigans. And today, I'm actually going to be trying something a little bit different. I'm going to be giving you guys my top five most hyped upcoming cartoons in my opinion. Okay, so again, my most hyped top five cartoons that are coming out within the next year or two. So we got some bangers on this list and this is in my opinion. Some of you guys are going to disagree. You're going to be like, oh, Sandro, why wasn't XYZ on this list? These are my top picks, so you got to respect that. And without further ado, let's get into it. Number five. Has been Hotel. Okay, so this is from Vizzy Pop. If you guys haven't been watching their other animated show, which is called um, Hell of a Boss, it's been a great show. It's been a great show. Um, I, I think like the animation is probably some of the top tier stuff that we're, we're currently getting from even the streaming server. The see, how is it that an indie creator is making better animation than HBO Max, Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple TV Plus? How is this possible? <laughs> They're giving us some of the highest quality animation folks on their YouTube channel uh, and Vizzy Pop. I think they're over like, some of their videos have over 100 million views. They've got like 6 million subs. It's been pretty crazy. So they've got their show. You might've seen the pilot for it. Has been Hotel. It's finally coming this year, apparently. Uh, we've got some teasers that said previously that it was coming soon, quote unquote. And um, the the most people right now are speculating that they're going to delay it till Halloween because Hell of a Boss, it's a show about like demons and, you know, uh, it has a very like underworld type of feel. Like it's a very Halloween-y type of show. You know what I mean? This is the type of show you would release around Halloween. So a lot of people are speculating the October 31st release date. Uh, I would not be surprised in the slightest, but uh, yeah. Has Been Hotel, it's a show I've been looking forward to for quite some time. I'm completely caught up on Hell of a Boss. I think it's a really great show. Um, my favorite character is um, Moxie and Millie. I think they're, that's a great little demon couple there. Very nice, very nice. And uh, yeah, that I'm just really, really looking forward to Has Been Hotel. Uh, hopefully we get some cool and original new songs in there. Uh, cause there's a lot of fans of the songs that we got from, uh, the original, um, pilot that are still on busy pops, YouTube channel. I it's a good show. I'm looking forward to it. So let's go. That's my number five. And now we're going on to number four. You think it is take a wild guess. I'm a big fan of Futurama. Of course, uh, you guys might've seen my video, uh, not so long ago where I talked about how Futurama is coming back after all these years. Again, this show has been canceled. This show has been, you know, <laughs> just like multiple times. It's, it's been on networks upon networks and canceled and brought back. And oh my God, it's finally being brought back again by Hulu. We're going to be getting 20 new episodes. I did a video on this. You guys probably seen it. 20 episodes and it's coming sometime in 2023. Again, that's coming to Hulu. Uh, sorry, did I say Hulu? Hulu. It's coming to Hulu. Uh, and... You guys might have remembered. Also, I did a second video talking about John DiMaggio, who they were working out a deal with him. You know, the people didn't know, was he coming back? Is, you know, there was some discrepancy. Most of the other, I think like every single other Futurama voice actor is coming back, uh, except for the ones that passed away. But uh, so, and, and then they had John DiMaggio. They hadn't signed him yet. People were getting a little bit scared. Is he going to be in here? And there was a, a bit of a backlash on Twitter and such. And uh, no, eventually it was confirmed that John DiMaggio is back. Again, if you want to find out more details about that, I do have a video on it. So you guys could go watch that. And um, the next pick. So that was my number uh, four pick. We're moving right on. Number three. We're going right down, right through it. Clone High. Okay. I'm a huge fan of the original Clone High. Uh, if you guys don't know, that show unfortunately left on a cliffhanger where all of the main characters got frozen in a freezer. And um, it's just a shame. So they actually are not going to be continuing off the original Clone High, unlike Futurama. So Futurama is getting a new season. The original Clone High is, it's gone. We're getting a reboot. Uh, what do we got here? So the only thing right now that we know about it is that it's, <clears throat> we don't know the dates. It, it, like, honestly, it says that it could be tw uh, 2023. Uh, we don't have enough information on Clone High Reboot right now. 
we do know it's coming to HBO Max for two seasons. So it got it got not one, but two seasons picked up already. So that's fantastic. And again, we don't have a lot of information on Clone High. It's a really, really good show. But uh, <laughs> I'm just so hyped just to see a show that I used to watch in my childhood come back. And this is an adult show too. It had a kick-ass theme song. It was like, way, way back in the 1980s, secret government employees. Uh, and then it's like, Clone High. Yeah, great theme. Okay, you don't need me to sing the whole damn thing. But it was a great, great theme song. I really, really liked it. And uh, I can't wait for this reboot. And without further ado, let's move on to the uh, number two. Oh, wait. That, yeah, yeah. Number two. So that was my number three. We're moving right on to my number two. Number two. Okay, so now that we're done number three, which was Clone High, we're moving right on to number two. And my number two is Unicorn Warriors Eternal, which is coming sometime in 2022. We don't have a release date, but uh, this is being made by Gendy Tartakovsky. You guys know this guy, Gendy Tartakovsky. He worked on all kinds of things. He did Primal on Adult Swim. That's that show with that like savage character. That's a great show, by the way. I really like it. I really like where the story's heading with that one. Uh, he also worked on, um, sorry, he created Dexter's Lab and Samurai Jack, you guys know my feelings on the end of Samurai Jack. Very rushed, uh, the, the final season. So, like, Samurai Jack, it had four seasons. Then, many, many years, how much was it? Like, 10, 15 years later, only recently, they finished the show. You know, Jack never defeated a coup, so they made a final season. It was kind of rushed. Uh, they completely forgot about Jack's, like, previous love interest, which was known as the Cricket Girl. And they replaced her with this character named Ashi. And then it was a very tragic ending, but like it was also very rushed. One of the saddest things is that in the first, like Jack's parent, Jack's father, right? We don't, we never actually learned Jack's um, name, but um, in the first episode, Jack's mother and father send him on the quest. It's his dad that actually sends him on the quest to defeat a coup in the first place. And I, I, in the final episode, I was really hoping that his father would be like, oh my God, you're, you did it, son. You did it. They just completely skip over the parents, go right into Ashi's wedding. It was just, oh man, the parents don't have a speaking role in the final episode. What a rushed ending. So, uh, you know, Gendy Tartakovsky, he's good, but when, you know, when he doesn't have to rush, you know, <laughs> when he doesn't have to rush, he does, he makes some great shows, um, Again, oh, he also did uh, Symbiotic Titan, uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars, and uh, yeah, he he also apparently worked on the Powerpuff Girls, and uh, what was the other one? Oh, Dexter's Lab. <laughs> yeah, this guy's been around the block. I got his page up right here. Gee whiz. Uh, yeah, Cra yeah, he he's friends with Craig McCracken, and uh, he even worked on Foster's Home. Yeah, Gendy has been, <laughs> Mr. Gendy Tartakovsky has been around the block. So I can't wait to see what he does with Unicorn Warriors Eternal. And this is an action show. We're finally getting back to freaking Unicorn War Like, action show. It's an action show, guys. I I'm just super excited. Like, back in the day, Cartoon Network, we used to get all these shows, like Adventure Time and, like, I, even Steven Universe, uh, I mean, I don't really like Steven Universe too, too much, but like even Steven Universe, technically an action show, we would get stuff like Ben 10, the original Teen Titans, all of these shows that had action and storytelling, they just kind of disappeared. They disappeared even like you could even throw in the Powerpuff Girls if you really wanted to. Uh, they sometimes had episodes that like carried over and like certain villains and whatever um, episodes that like the continuity actually mattered. We just don't see that nowadays. We don't see it. We got Teen Titans Go where nothing really matters. It's like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, we got all these bad shows nowadays. They're, it's not that they're bad shows. They're just, they feel lazy compared to like just 10, 15 years ago. Like what happened to Cartoon Network? It's just nuts, man. Even, even like um, Nickelodeon too. It's not just Cartoon Network. Nickelodeon has been cheaping out on a lot of these action shows. You know, we, when's the last time you you guys got excited for something like Danny Phantom, right? Uh, some of you, you, some of you are probably gonna say, "Well, Ninja Turtles was an action show." Yeah, I guess you could throw that in there, but come on, like something other than Ninja Turtles. When's the last time we got a Danny Phantom like show? You know what I mean? It's been a while. I feel like it's just been a while. 
Uh, even something like um, My Life as a Teenage Robot. Just been a while. Just been a while. Why can't so the, you know? I'm just grateful that we at least get this one action show here. Um, hopefully they'll bring back Ben 10. Oh, if they had announced, but let me let me tell you guys, my number one would have been Ben 10. Uh, if they ever decide to continue off Omniverse, if you haven't seen the last episode of Omniverse, let me tell you, Ben 10, the original series of Ben 10, he goes on a road trip with his grandpa and uh, and his um, cousin Gwendolyn. And they basically go all across America. He finds the Omnitrix. They have all kinds of crazy alien themed adventures. One of the greatest shows Cartoon Network's ever produced. And how does the show, end? how does Omniverse end? Which is like a continuation series. It basically ends with Ben 10 saying, we should go into space and have a space road trip. And I'm like, this is like one of the most poetic endings they could ever give the show. And we do know in the future, he becomes Ben 10,000, who apparently has 10,000 aliens. I don't know how they would ever pull that off, but similarly to Lilo and Stitch, they never go over all the experiments, right? There's like 626. We never see all 626. We only see like a small select handful. Uh, so we could just see like a couple aliens. Even though he's Ben 10,000, we could just see random aliens here and there. Uh, but it would be great to see every alien from the original. Because he has 10,000, he needs to bring back every single one he's ever used if they ever make this into a show. But uh, sadly, this is just a pipe dream right now. But considering how many reboots that we're seeing in modern times, maybe it'll happen. Maybe we'll see a sequel to Omniverse. I I'm a hoper. I'm a believer, damn it. I'm a believer. But uh, let's go on to our number one. So Unicorn Warriors Eternal was my number two. And now it's time for my number one. And finally, number one. What do you guys think it was? Batman Caped Crusader. There you go. That's a, you know, you got to have the Batman. I'm a huge fan of the Batman, the animated series here. Uh, one of my favorite shows of all time. Just such a great, another action. You notice a trend here? I'm a fan of action shows. You notice that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do love my action shows. Some of you guys are going to be wondering why I didn't have that other... Um, so at the same time this show was announced, Batman Caped Crusader, we actually got a second show announced. And that one was called My Adventures with Superman. And boy, oh boy, does that look terrible. We got... Uh, I'll put a picture on the screen here for you guys. We got Clark Kent that looks like a soy boy Mr. Rogers. We got freaking uh what's her name there lois lane which is now tan skinned and she looks like Lu luz luz or Lu I, can't, I can't i can always forget her name uh the character from the owl house luz i think her name is um sh she looks just like her has the same shirt and everything i don't know what's going on there uh and she does look kind of like a lesbian i gotta be real she has like a very tomboyish hair um and then once again i don't know why what's the fetish here What's the fetish with Hollywood replacing all the gingers? But uh, unfortunately, another ginger got blackwashed. Uh, and uh, my God, folks. My God, they just keep doing it. They, Why do they keep eradicating all the gingers? What is happening in Hollywood? They hate gingers. They are just going to keep doing this, folks. They're going to keep doing it. Uh, and yeah, so Jimmy Olsen is, is a black nerd now. I, I don't know what they were thinking here. But, um, yeah, they don't want to see any redheads. Um, and here's the weird thing, too. You can, why, why do this to Jimmy Olsen? You could just make a second reporter, right? They're, they're working at a, an office. They're working at the Daily Planet. There's dozens of employees. You couldn't have just made another black reporter? Why would you do this to Jimmy Olsen? There's no point to do this. It's pretty disgraceful. I miss our old redhead friend, Jimmy. But uh, whether it's the Supergirl show or this show, it seems they're hell-bent on making Jimmy Olsen from a ginger into a black guy. I don't know why, but there is definitely an agenda from Hollywood to do this bullshit, and I'm sick of it. Uh, so this is – I like, I'm going to watch it. I do not have high hopes for uh, – again, my adventures with Superman. No high hopes for this show, let me tell you. But uh, when it comes to Batman Cape Crusader – I have a lot more hope because Bruce Tim, we have a double edged sword with this one, okay? Bruce Tim, who worked on the original uh, Batman animated series, he's going to be in there. Then, but also, who who else is going to be a creative control here? 
J.J. Abrams. Whoa. <laughs> this is frequently known as the man who ru ruined Star Wars and Star Trek. Uh, and I'm not a fan of J.J. Abrams. I think he's terrible. Uh, I don't like his storytelling. This is the mystery box man himself. Uh, I am just not a fan of J.J. Abrams. So I hope... but. Sometimes JJ brings in good ideas though. You know what I mean? Like like he 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 does his little mystery box bullshit, but like he bring he knows how to create a mystery. So what I'm hoping is JJ Abrams will create the mystery, but then let Bruce Tim write the ending. Do not let please for the love of God, do not let JJ Abrams write the ending to <laughs> to any episode of this show. Please. Don't do it. <laughs> Let Bruce Tim handle the writing, the ending. Like I said, so JJ can make a good mystery. He just doesn't know how to end them. Uh, so Bruce Tim, we got to get him in there to finish his wacky plots so he doesn't go off track and make some bullshit again. Um, and one of the interesting things about this show, it's coming, uh, I believe, we don't actually, uh, 2023 was it? Hold on, let me just double check here. Uh, I thought it said 2023. Let me just one more time. Uh, 2023 at an unknown date. Okay. And, uh, the other thing we do have is that it is coming to both HBO Max and Cartoon Network. So that's pretty great. Uh, again, it's great to see action shows returning to Cartoon Network. We need to get back on this, on this train, on the hype train of action shows. And then the dream of getting Ben 10 back will be made into a reality. So that's going to be it, folks. Um... Those are my top five picks. So again, just to reiterate there, Has Been Hotel is my number five. Futurama is my number four. Clone High is my number three. Unicorn Warriors Eternal is my number two. And Batman Cape Crusader is my number one pick for the most hyped shows or the shows that I'm most hyped for coming up in the nearby future. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did a little bit of editing here. Uh, I don't usually do this sort of thing, but uh, I thought this would be an interesting take uh, to test it in. And um, yeah, please let me know. All, what, are, what show? Did I miss anything? Let me know if I missed a big show that maybe I should have put on here. Uh, should I have had Has Been Hotel? Maybe I should have knocked it off for something else. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. But I think Futurama is just... I, I'm just a little bit more hyped for Clone High. The reason I put Clone High above Futurama was because I we just haven't seen Clone High in decades. Whereas like Futurama, it hasn't been that long since it's been canceled. Uh, but you know, or since it ended, I guess. Uh, it hasn't been too, too long. But Clone High has just been like dead in the water for de like almost two decades now. Jesus. So I'm just really hyped to see those characters again. And uh, yeah, and then Unicorn Warriors Eternal. I have a feeling that's going to be a huge show. And of course, Batman Cape Crusader. I just can't wait. They're going to, I, you already know every time Bruce, Tim touches something, it usually turns to gold. Uh, and never forget folks, Harley Quinn and the condiment King were actually original characters made for the, uh, animated series. Who knows what kind of crazy new Batman villains that we're going to get to experience for the first time. Imagine being able to tell your children, I watched live on the day it came out that brand new character that became a staple. You know, like, remember, I was a kid at the time, and for the first time, I saw Harley Quinn in that show. And since then, Harley Quinn has just evolved into this massive character. I feel like it's part of my history that I got to see Harley Quinn, like, when the character was first arrived into the public, public eye. And so, you guys, you might just be here, and one day you get to tell your kids... I saw Batman the Cap Cape Crusader and saw that first big villain, you know, the next big Batman character, villain, hero, whatever, whatever, that uh, that becomes iconic like Harley Quinn. I saw it on the day it came out. I just can't wait. It's going to be hype. I just know it. Batman Cape Crusader. And uh, I'm, I'm just super stoked, folks. And uh, so, yeah, that's going to be it. Again, le let me know all your comments down below. Please like, please share. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. That would really make my day. But more importantly than that, if you could just watch one ad for your boy, Sandro, I'd really, really appreciate it, folks. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And peace out. Bye-bye.